G'day, I'm Zach Cross from Cross Country Fishing Charters and this is my Sea Cruiser 9000. We're at Apollo Bay in Victoria. Yeah, we decided we we're gonna set off on a bit of an adventure to King Island. King Island's a place that I've never been to before. Um, I've done a lot of research and, and homework and study on King Island, but it doesn't do it justice. Just to go there and camp on the beach, and it was just, it was incredible. Um, you've got exposed reefs with waves breaking over them all the time, um, and then you've got King Island itself with pockets all through there. Bass Strait, if no one knows what Bass Strait is, um, you can't take Bass Strait lightly. You can turn at the click of a finger. Um, so you've got to plan your trip properly, and which, which we did. We knew that it was going to be our roughest part of the trip was going to be at the start, and it was only going to get better for the next two days. We obviously had Scotty Gray aboard the boat, um, and so we're all pretty excited about that because Scotty's one of the best fishermen in Victoria, hands down. Even himself and myself, when you get over there, you've got so many things you can do, and that's, that's the hardest bit. You've got a bomby breaking over here that could be kings. You've got deep water, you've got drop-offs, you've got 30 metre ledges, and there's just so much stuff you can do. It's so, it's so much different fishing opportunities you can do there. Really, you need a week. Oh, we've got a, actually quite a variety of fish. Um, yeah, from your, oh, we've got plenty of, plenty of your snapper, we've got some knife jaw, we've got gummy shark, we've got school shark. Um, we've got plenty of colourful fish, um, your, your sea perch, your nanagai, we've got plenty of latchets, um, a few spur dogs, the boys. <laughs> like, yeah, there was, there was squid, um, plenty of squid, endless amounts of squid, a lot of arrow squid out there. Mo most people that know Scotty, they love him and, and to go on an op a, a trip to have him on my boat, I was, I've been like a, a kid at Christmas, I've been so excited um, and it didn't. Yeah, it exceeded all expectations. He's just, he's a cracker. Like, he'll be up the back and he's just raw and he's got a fish on the jig. Every, on the jig with a micro jig, we've done a lot of that too. And to catch a, catch a little sea perch this big, he's frothing, his enthusiasm and it's contagious. Everyone's up and about and he's just, yeah, he's, he's a weapon, Scotty. Love of fishing probably started um, back in the Wimmera in Horsham, where I'm from, uh, with my dad, Pedro. Uh, Dad just he just loved it, absolutely loved his fishing. And then once once I turned 17, I bought my first boat, uh, 488 Savage Offspray. And from there, I've just bought and sold for the, for probably 10 years. I bought and sold boats. I always had three or four boats at one time, from tinnies to big plate boats. I travelled all around Australia and picked them up. Just love it. It was just, it was a it was an illness. Uh, my partner said, she, she said, it's not an addiction, it's an illness. She reckons something's wrong with me, so. I decided I was going to, um, yeah, build, build the, the boat of my dreams. I, originally, it only started at like seven metres. I went and seen a lot of different um, boat builders. It's a, a nine metre sea cruiser from Richardson's Marine. Um, it's, it's been, it was sort of like a, a three year process from start to finish from um, took me over over nine months. I fully sort of custom designed the boat myself. Yeah, I've drawn something, scribbled it out, drawn it again, moved it, arranged, rearranged the house to suit walk arounds, distances, gaps, rang, googled. Um, I had a full head of hair before I started, now I'm nearly bald. Um, dimensions are, well, the, the boat's overall is 9.3 by 2.95 wide. Um, originally, I started at seven metres. Um, then it went to eight, then it went to nine, then it went a touch over nine, then it went oversize. Um, the motors went from 200s to 250s, and then I wanted 300s, but Ed wouldn't let me, so I settled with 250s. I've virtually brought everything I've done with all my boats the last 10 years and just built my ultimate boat. So with the engines, it was designed to have the 200 AP when they first came out, and and it seems I got excited with everything else on the boat. I wanted more horsepower. And so we'd end up deciding to put the twin 250s on it, APs. Cruising speed's around your 22 to, to sort of 25 knots. Um, I can get with comfortably with sort of six or eight people um, on, the, on the right day, obviously. I can get 1.2 litres per kilometre. Um, today, um, we come in, we had four on board, a fair bit of gear. Um, we're going about 33 to 35 knots, and I was using 1.4 litre, litres 
per, per kilometre. I had 18 and a half pitch props and I've gone down to 17s um, and just got a slight cup on them just to give me a little bit more traction, um, especially because we drive a lot in and out through the, uh, the heads at Port Phillip Bay and you do get a lot of white water. I just want a little bit more traction. Um, I lost a little bit of top end speed, but I think it, it makes it a safer boat. So I'm definitely happy with them. I obviously do have a soft spot. I've had a lot of Suzuki's on my boats and these things are just incredible. That fly by wire on these, it's, pe people have got to see it to believe it. Like they hop in something like this and you punch it and you'll throw people out the back of the boat. Like it's, um, they're just incredible. They're absolutely incredible, I love them. This is my office. I, I want it to, I want to, I, I want to wake up in the morning and jump out of my skin to come down and, and hop in this boat. And, and it does, like I'd, I'd live on here if I could. Designing it, I wanted enough fuel um, to do sort of my bigger trips, it's like similar to something like this, and so I don't have to be refueling all the time. So we've designed it with 500 litres of fuel. Um, I've got 150 litres of water. Uh, I've had Garmin in my last three boats. Um, I think my view on electronics, you've got to stick with what you're familiar with and what you trust. Um, I've, I've had all the others, I still love all them, but yeah, I just, I just couldn't look past um, Garmin. And, and to have, I end up going the, the 24 inch touchscreen, 84-24, and that unit is just absolutely incredible. Um, so I, I've got twin 175 kilowatt transducers, um, one high and wide, one low. Um, I wanted a boat to take at least eight people. Um, so this is surveyed for eight and two. Um, and that hence, when I finally decided to, um, to put the walk around on the boat, um, that was probably the biggest decision I made throughout the whole build. Uh, it was gonna be a full width cab and a walk around. I changed it probably three or four times. Um, and I'm so glad that I ended up going the walk around because it just gives you that, 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 that more space. And when you've got that decent fish, you can run it right around the boat. The whole cab was designed around my fridge freezers. Um, so I've got two 80 litre um, ice cool fridge, fridge freezers. And so that determined the length of the cab. Um, everything here, I've got a 160 litre um, esky here. And so this one here is, is fully removable. You can pull this out and the whole station's removable as well. And then I've designed it so you can get up on the hard cab, but not punters, punters can't, but we can. And when I use it privately and some people go out there to sleep, I don't know, not pointing any fingers. Yeah, Travi, yeah. Obviously you've got your scuffers, you have to have them for survey. And you've got live bait tanks, you've got livey tubes um, for, the, for the dream of going to chase, chase your marlin one day. Yeah, second helm. So that come from uh, when I went to uh, the Hutch and Wilco boat show in New Zealand. Uh, that cost me a lot of money, not just to fly there, but all the ideas I got from that, which come into this boat. And that second station, that was a second I seen it uh, on this on the, on a boat there. It was just, it was a no brainer. I said to Ed, I was there with Ed as well. Um, and I said, I want that. And he just started laughing. I use that for my docking because I've just got such a good view of the outside of the boat. Um, and when we're chasing like a, a good fish, um, I can come out the back because I don't want to spend all my time up in the cab. I want to be out here with the punters and um, and yeah, mingling with everyone out in the back deck. With the speakers, I ended up going full fusion, um, and I went the signature series speakers. So they're your seven seven um, signature series. So I've got four of them out on the back deck, two up the top in speaker boxes, and then ones there. Are, um, obviously, you know, in a box as well. Most people that know Eddie's obviously an amazing human being, but he. He gets excited. He loves adventures and and trying something, going going down a different path. And for about two years, I spoke to him nearly every day. Um, his wife, she would have she would have wanted to kill me. Like I literally, I hounded him. Um, I think he took a, a lot of pride in this too, um, because I think he knew what it sort of meant to me. He knew like I've I've given everything up I've got to to try and make this work. And life's about taking a risk, I think. And and once I realised I was in, Ed was in it with me, like he, he backed me 100% of the way. I didn't get into this just to do with the fishing. I love people. Um, now I, I, as you've probably seen the last few days, I love talking. Um, and and it's, it's all about the adventure too. We just try and give people, they leave at the end of the day, whether they've got a bag of fish in their hand or not, they leave with a smile on their face and you don't, they wanna come back. 
So the name's Laura Jane. Um, I've, I've named the boat uh, after my partner, uh, Laura Jane. It's, without her, I, I wouldn't have this boat. Um, it's sort of, it, there's no question this boat put our life on hold for three years. Uh, she wants marriage and kids and, and all the rest of it, and, and I, I built a boat. <laughs> um, but yeah, in saying that, yeah, I'd, I'd, I would have been, yeah, I wouldn't have been able to do it without her. And so naming the boat after her was the least I could do. So it was just, yeah, really, really good. Fuck, now we're all going to have to name our fucking boat <laughs> after our fucking partners. Thanks, mate. Fuck yourself, look oh. at